even relatively mild COVID-19 infections can leave a distinct mark on the brain. A new study shows that COVID-19 infection is linked to shrinkage and damage in specific brain areas. This study was based on data from more than 700 people who had, prior to the pandemic, contributed brain scans to a large repository based in the UK. Between March 2020 and April 2021, about 400 of these individuals caught COVID-19. Most were not hospitalized for their infections. After they recovered, researchers re-scanned their brains to see whether the organ structure had changed at all following the infection. The team compared these before and after snapshots to those from 384 people who hadn't caught the virus. These brain scans revealed distinct patterns of shrinkage in the brains of people who caught COVID-19. The damage was more extensive and occurred in different regions than the normal changes that showed up in people who never caught the virus. In particular, damage appeared in brain areas involved in smell processing and memory encoding. The orbitofrontal cortex and parahippocampal gyrus showed the most pronounced shrinkage in people who caught COVID-19, and those individuals also showed a greater reduction in overall brain size than those who didn't catch the virus. Tissue damage also appeared in brain areas connected to the primary olfactory cortex, which receives sensory information from scent-detecting neurons in the nose. Plus, people who caught COVID-19 showed greater decline on various cognitive tests, which were designed to assess attention and executive function compared with the control group. The new study doesn't address exactly how this damage occurs, although scientists have several theories on this front. The virus may directly infect brain cells, some think. Others suspect that inflammation in the brain may be to blame for the changes, or potentially a loss of sensory information from the nose caused by smell loss, may cause various brain areas to atrophy over time. A study published in Cell last month hinted that the virus likely doesn't invade the brain directly, but the study authors still mention this as a possibility. It's also possible that the way in which the coronavirus wreaks havoc in the brain differs slightly between different coronavirus variants. Future studies should address this question directly, as well as the question of how long the observed cognitive deficits might last. The new study also doesn't address whether the COVID-related damage could accelerate normal structural brain changes that typically occur in line with aging. Future research can look into these potential downstream effects, while other studies can focus on how these findings might apply to people with long COVID, who often report symptoms like memory issues and brain fog.